shadow of death hovered over King George of England as these last pictures were made. Unknowingly, he was bidding a final farewell to his daughter Elizabeth and her husband Prince Philip as they left on a five-month tour of Africa and Australia. The 56-year-old monarch had but a few days to live. He died suddenly in his sleep. The man who was to become one of Britain's best-loved rulers spent his youth in the traditional English public school, later entering naval service. As Duke of York, it was his duty to represent the crown on many official occasions. His wedding in 1923 to Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyon was the occasion of one of London's greatest royal spectacles. Dowager Queen Mary gave the event her official blessing. It was the beginning of 29 years of happy marriage during which the quiet, unassuming man, who later was to rule an empire, went about his public duties. Following the abdication of his brother, who ruled less than a year as Edward VIII, he succeeded to the throne. His coronation ceremony attracted thousands from all corners of the earth to throng London streets. In 1937, a new reign began in Britain as the Duke of York was crowned King George VI, a reign that was to cover 15 historic and tumultuous years. With the crown and scepter came responsibility of moral leadership during the dark days of war and the later days of austerity. To Buckingham Palace came a closely knit and happy royal family. They became the symbols of the British Empire around the world. One of the many duties demanded of King George and Queen Elizabeth was the spreading of goodwill throughout the Commonwealth of Nations. They made an extensive tour of Africa. It was during this trip that an historic profile picture was made of the royal pair. Possibly nowhere in all their travels were the king and queen more enthusiastically welcomed than in Canada, the first dominion to recognize Queen Elizabeth as Elizabeth II. While in Canada, they traveled from coast to coast and met literally thousands of Canadians personally. During their trip to the Western Hemisphere, their majesties became ambassadors of goodwill to the United States, where they were the guests of the late President Roosevelt and members of his family. The king endeared himself to Americans as a kindly and sincere envoy. When duties permitted, the king's happiest hours were in the country. Close ties of affection bound the royal family at work and at play. Gladly and willingly did the king put the cares of state behind him to enjoy an outing with his wife and growing children. But such opportunities were rare for George VI, whose responsibilities were many, whose time was rarely his own, and time was passing. One of the king's proudest days was that on which his daughter, Princess Elizabeth, married Philip, the present Duke of Edinburgh. The king and queen looked on with the same pride shared by all mothers and fathers. Another proud day in empire history was the silver anniversary of England's monarch and his queen. Princess Elizabeth, Prince Philip, and Princess Margaret Rose were in attendance as the fabulous royal carriage wound through the streets of London, bearing the charming couple whose worldwide popularity, friendly spirit, and marital felicity combined to fill millions with a warm, sympathetic response. The joy of the Empire citizens soon turned to grief as it was announced that King George was faced with a major operation, the consequences of which were seriously in doubt. Crowds waited patiently outside Buckingham Palace for many tedious hours for the bulletin that spread the word of the monarch's hour-to-hour -hour condition. England's multitudes kept constant watch until the news of the king's recovery was flashed. His return was the signal for general rejoicing. His temporary improvement and his following convalescence lent hope to all that he would have no recurrence of the affliction that had resulted in his lung operation. But though gallant hope was held for his longevity, the die was already cast. Meanwhile, the royal family carried on with true British spirit. The British Crown Colony of Kenya awaits the arrival of Elizabeth and Philip. This was to be the first stop on the global tour undertaken by a future queen because of the ill health of her father. Throngs of loyal subjects greet the royal couple, 
who only hours before had been cheered by friends and relatives in England, among them King George, apparently well on his way to recovery. The incident of the little native boy and his bouquet touched the heart of the 25-year-old princess, soon to be queen. The little boy will remember this day. But her vacation was soon to be over. Elizabeth and Philip were high in a jungle treetop bungalow watching for big game to come to a watering hole when the tragic news came to her by radio telephone from London. Her father was dead. The 56-year-old monarch died in his sleep at his country estate at Sandringham, Norfolk, the very place where he was born. All over the world, flags are at half-mast for a man of quiet dignity who kept firm the bonds of empire. Now his daughter, Queen Elizabeth, picks up the reins. Long live the Queen!